next four weeks, I'm going to be joined by Faith No More, who will be sharing their hopes, fears, joys and ambitions with us here on Postmodern. Welcome again to Europe. You're back for the second time this year. And welcome to Helsinki. It's pretty, pretty jolly cold out there. Have you guys been out? Have you been doing the rounds? <laughs> yeah, we went sledding this morning. That was really fun. Jolly. Yeah, it was a 20-dog team. Usually they do 18, but they put on another two, so we went a little bit faster than yeah. the average sled. It's an amazing thing you can make dogs do when it's cold outside. Something that MTV Sports should take a look at. Yeah. yeah. We're going parachuting after this interview, too. Yeah. I was going to go put my tongue on a cold uh, telephone pole. <laughs> So is this, this cold something that you've been used to, when something you, you're geared up for, or is it really just... Not really. Last time we were here, it was really, really warm. It was on the longest day of the year, and there was sunlight, you know, this is, you were 24 doing a festival, hours. Is that right? Yeah. Just went up and did a festival. It was really warm. No cold at all. This is our first time, I think, touring in, like, hardcore winter weather. Do you think the, um, the, the tour that you did with... Um, Guns N' Roses and Soundgarden and Metallica has prepared you for what you're going to be doing now because you're headlining your own, your own gig now. Well, just because we're playing every day, like, we've learned the art of hanging out in hotel lobbies, you know, pretty or not leaving our room, and that it actually can, the zen of hanging out in your room and never leaving the hotel. So is, is, it, this is it the zen of sloth. Experience. This is really part of rock and roll lifestyle. You don't get out and take a look at the. No, rock and roll is sick. not wanting to know anything about anybody else. Yeah. But That's having them is. want to know everything about you. But you are going to Live be in a cocoon. sampling, you know, the delights of Finnish cuisine, that, that kind of thing. Is that something you'd be into? Sure. Reindeer meat? Bear sure. meat? Well, that's all they eat up here. Sort of Grizzly Adams, sort of aesthetic. It kind of fits with the cover of your latest album, Angel Dust. We've got lots of meat photos. You're just working in the same idea right here. Kind of, kind of <laughs> not. <laughs> Okay, well, that's certainly... Let's just not tie those two things together. <laughs> yeah. We're going to be taking a look at a video from Sonic Youth, very much, um, well, I think, still on the alternative edge there a wee bit. You guys seem to have crossed over a bit more, I, may, I hesitate to say mainstream, but a wider audience, which Sonic Youth maybe have yet to do. Do you think you kind of missed that alternative thing, tag, label, want of a better word? Well, we still stop by the Alternative Club every once in a while and have a few drinks, you know. Say hi to old friends. Pay our respects. Look down our noses. We, you know, we go to the annual Alternative Club dinners that they have, you know, around Christmas time, you know. It must be getting The Christmas close. parties are pretty good, actually, at the Alternative Club. Yeah, it's like an Elks Club kind of thing. you got to wear horns. It's a real drag. Yeah, last year, Eddie Vedder was Santa Claus. Oh, wow. Well, he probably moved on this year. He might not be there this year. I know. Well, it... <laughs> yeah. Yes, it's the Faith No More competition time. Win a trip to see Faith No More in Milan. See the sights, see the concert. Faith No More themselves will take care of you. And you get to make a special video of yourself with the band. We'll make a video with you and spoil you rotten. All you have to do is answer this simple question. You know, we're all pretty much grown-ups in this band. We're all real independent. Except for one of us. There's one of us who's a bit of a baby. He still lives with his mom. If you can guess who that is, you win the contest, you come to Milan, we take care of you, we spank you, we treat you well, everything will be great, babe. Send your answer on a postcard, please, to The Faith No More Competition, MTV Postmodern, P.O. Box 1384, London NW1, OHW, England. You win the contest, we'll fly you to Milan. Faith No More. Watching postmodern, I'm joined by three of the guys from Faith No More. Um, the, the funk kind of metal tag you've worn for a while now, and I was just wondering how many albums as diverse as Angel Dust you're going to have to release before you lose that. I guess we dug ourselves a hole, huh? <laughs> this album might do it. I don't know. Yeah, it seems like we're getting the question less and less. Are you a funk metal band? Which is a good sign. We never were really comfortable it, with it from the very beginning. I would say one more record and it should be out of the way. Then we'll go back to doing that. Yeah, it never was. It never yeah. was a thing anyway. It was just, you know. Was it just something that journalists? I think it was a into? journalist, uh, yeah, speculation kind of thing. We're the kind of band. I think if you call us anything, we'll say we're not that anyway. So I mean, you know, it's funk metal. Who knows what they'll call us next time? But we're not that either. I guess we'll I mean, say we're not. 
working with with guy, you know, bands like Metallica, people obviously make the connection. But I mean, you're not you're not metal. I don't think. <laughs> well, we don't like to be called metal anyway. I yeah. mean, being called anything is kind of not what we're all about. Yeah. And, and, yeah, how do you like somebody telling you what you are? You know, it's like, well, you're, you're just a dumb blonde. Yeah. It's kind of like that. After a while, you just kind of learn to nod your head a little bit. Oh, yeah, I guess maybe. Maybe I, <laughs> I might be a dumb blonde. Yeah, all right. Am I that? <laughs> okay, whatever you, you say. say so. <laughs> but, but doesn't it become annoying if you have some kind of, of attitude about your own music? Well, that's the thing, we don't. So it's easy for us to uh, kind of learn how to nod our heads. Yeah, the, the play the game. The categorization thing is a really, is really must be just something that people don't know when there's music that comes out that people don't have any idea where it should go. It's just like trying to find. Yeah, I mean, what you call something doesn't really end up mattering. It doesn't change what it is, so it doesn't really bother me what people say we are. Yeah, if you look at it as that, it's just kind of a journalistic tool. You know, they're calling things certain things so people can relate to it. I mean. I don't have a big problem with it. Yeah, if people think that way, that's fine. It's just, you know, if somebody calls you that, you want to you try to make yourself as open as possible, you know. And have, I mean, you, people are not just one thing, you know. They have all, you know, different things in their personality. So, I mean, you have a right to defend yourself and they have a right to call you whatever they want, I guess. So, have, does it make any difference to the audiences that you, that you get? I mean, is it a, a headbanger's audience or not? Is it quite diverse? Don't really know. Ooh, yeah, what's a headbanger? There you go. It's a label. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody falls into the trap. Um, we've got R.E.M. up next on um, Postmodern, a band who've said that they're not going to tour in Europe until 1994. They didn't tour the last album. They're not touring this album. Is that something that you could foresee you guys doing in the future, maybe just putting out a couple of albums and not going on the road? I can't even picture being in a band <laughs> that could, you know, not tour. I mean, that's what keeps us alive, so... Yeah. Yeah, that's an amazing thing. I can't believe I anyone could be really say yes cool. or no. Yeah. It would be cool. I think the only way we could get away with it is if we did like a totally just studio record that we couldn't play live. Yeah. Then we would have no choice. <laughs> if we did an <laughs> easy listening record, that would do it. Otherwise, I think we're pretty much primarily a live band. Yeah. So it's good for us to tour and let people see us so they can understand what we're about. So they can apply the tag funk metal if they want sure. to. Sure. Well, <laughs> funk metal live band. Okay. Do sure. Like, do you like R.E.M.? Is it your kind of music? Some of the stuff I think is kind of cool. I like when Michael Stipe travels over the audience. Yeah. Okay. Since he doesn't have to play live, you know, he can make a video of himself being passed around. Yeah. Tied people over a bit. Figure that one out. Let's take a look at that. This is Drive. Smash, smash, Vana. Now, in lots of ways, you guys were doing what i guess the, the grungy kind of thing way before nirvana came on the scene and the whole seattle sound was known as the seattle sound how much do you think you paved the way for that seattle wave of music that's you know riding the big wave at the moment i would say just as bad as much as liberace paved the way for us you mean not much at all <laughs> well it's kind of weird we were like one of the first i guess weird bands to kind of get on the radio or something and since then a lot of bands that are kind of strange have been getting signed for a lot more money than we did so I guess we did help. But I see us as being, like, way weirder than anything. Like, Nirvana, I think, are a really great band, but I think all their songs are just great rock songs. They're real, I mean, they're great, but it's just, you know, rock real songs. Real catchy, so I yeah. Think what we do is, like, pretty obscure and hard for people to understand. A lot more difficult for people to understand than, say, a Nirvana song. Yeah, I mean, so, yeah, a lot of the Nirvana songs sound kind of like, almost like harder Bay City Roller songs, that kind of thing. Yeah. Which is great, you know, I mean, they're when, good when songs. When you guys started, I mean, the interest or the industry interest wasn't there in the underground so much like yeah. it is now. Did that make it more difficult for you when you, when you started? Would you... I think when we started, yeah, it was more difficult for us. Had we started right now and we're looking for a record contract, we probably would have got a better deal and it would have been a lot easier for us. At the time, we just kind of took what we could get and ran with it. But, I mean, we're different than a lot of these other bands, like the Seattle Sound. I don't think we sound like any of them. So, really, for us, still, we have a lot of work to do on our own just to, uh, because this record's different than the last record. We don't really have even our own sound, really. So, it's kind of, we're kind of in a whole different kind of game. So, but you, do you sympathize with what the, the whole Seattle thing is about? Or is that just a tag, again, because there's, we don't have a word for what's coming out of this particular area? in the States. 
I'm not really sure if that's the same kind of, if it's just a tag or if bands are kind of making it a tag. Yeah, it's hard to tell who it's coming from. So I don't even know what to say about that. We used to play with Soundgarden like a long time ago. They used to open up for us, like before they ever had a record deal. I think, but they're just like really, they're nice guys. I think their band's pretty cool. But like, I think a lot of those bands up there don't like each other very much. So <laughs> I don't know what the, the thing is, the Seattle thing. Yeah, there's got to be in a scene like that. I imagine there's a lot of animosity. Sure. Backstabbing. backstabbing. Right. I mean, people if it's that to... incestuous, there's got to be backstabbing. Especially when there's a movie being made about them all. <laughs> yeah, who's going to star in it for They've gotta, Yeah, they've got to fight for the parts. Got to be a little pecking order. Yeah, Bridget Fonda. Sort of like and Matt Dillon won. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to take a look at Nirvana now with Come As You Are. Come on. The first video of yours we're going to play is Epic. Which I guess was, well, for us anyway, it was the breakthrough video for an MTV audience. I mean, do you, do you see it as your breakthrough single? I don't know if we realized it at the time, but looking back on it, it sure looks like it was a breakthrough single for us. Because uh, it's kind of all kind of now in retrospect. Yeah, I guess it was pretty much the one. It's the one that got us into all this trouble. <laughs> it got you all this press. Yeah. When you play it live, is it, is it like... Um, is it like your stairway to heaven? I mean, do audiences go completely nuts when hmm. it comes up? It seems sometimes, yeah, that people may be just waiting to hear that one song. That's why we play it last, try and make them stick around. Yeah, yeah we do that old rock We've got these other good songs, yeah. so listen to these first. Yeah, we use that as, you know, bargaining power almost. The bait. It's here. Not yet, but it's here. Now, speaking of bait... <clears throat> The, um, the fish sequence in that video was always a, always brought up as a rather controversial. Nice segue. Yeah. Well, Go on. Wasn't that wasn't that controversial though, really? Was it? I mean, it was that, pretty silly. I think people. We just when we thought about doing the video, we thought about that as an image, just a, just a really beautiful image to use in the video. And then I think more than anything, like press people kind of, or maybe like our managers or something, made a big deal out of it to seem like it was a bigger deal than it was. So we were put in a position like to what defend it. What do you think of the video now? Do you, in Epic? light of what you've done, yeah. Looks a little old and crude to me. Yeah. Yeah. It seems a little dated. A little I'll flimsy. But... Faith No More, and we're going to take a look at Falling to Pieces from The Real Thing, 1989, I think it was released. Um, how important are videos actually to you? Because we've talked about, you know, you're playing live, and that's really, really important. But how important is the, the video business and things to, to what you do? We actually kind of like them to be really important, but most of the time, I mean, in the past videos that we've done, they've been really pressed for time. We're always hearing these things like, there's a deadline, quick, we've got to come up with a concept for the video in, like, you know, 20 minutes. Not really like that, but it's been really, like, rushed. If we can spend time with videos, I mean, it can be really important and they can turn out really great. Yeah, usually Sometimes. it's real fun to try and apply a visual image to what, you know, you're doing. But when you have to, uh, you know, rush it like that, it becomes more like a chore. Do you have much to do with, you know, the what? We like to, yeah. Yeah, that's why it's such a pain, because we have to, like, approve everything and make all these decisions all the time, and it can be frustrating with deadlines. Plus, it costs so much money to make them. Yeah. It's great, though, because we've reached a point where we realize that, you know, we can't, like, put our foot down and say, no, well, forget about the deadline. We've got to, you know, make this the way we want it. Can, can yeah. you talk a bit about um, the one we're going to play, Falling to Pieces? Does that represent what you had in mind after your 20-minute consultation? Well, back then we didn't realize so much that we could put our foot down, which is sort of... Well, we did, though. We had a lot... A little bit, yeah. Like with Epic, we had a lot to do with, with the this, ideas and the director. This one was kind of a rushed one, I think. It was, We didn't yeah. have so much to do with this one. We just kind of... We liked the first director that we used for Epic, so we used him again and kind of talked with him a little about what we were going to do for the video, but it was pretty rushed. In fact, we filmed it on a day off. Yeah. We were somewhere else. We flew in, filmed it, and left or something like that. And it was that. a little more vague. We just kind of liked the director and, and the look that he gave, you know, Epic. So we had actually, you know, trusted him With this to one. do a second one, yeah. Okay. Well, let's take a look at it. Pull into pieces. Yes, it's the Faith No More competition time. Win a trip to see Faith No More in Milan. See the sights, see the concert. Faith No More themselves will take care of you. And you get to make a special video of yourself with the band. We'll make a video with you and spoil you rotten. All you have to do is answer this simple question. You know, we're all pretty much grown-ups in this band. We're all real independent. Except for one of us. 
There's one of us who's a bit of a baby. He still lives with his mom. And if you can guess who that is, you win the contest, you come to Milan, we take care of you, we spank you, we treat you well. Everything will be great, babe. Send your answer on a postcard, please, to The Faith No More Competition, MTV Postmodern, P.O. Box 1384, London NW1, OHW, England. You win the contest, we'll fly you to Milan. Faith no more. Okay, the next video we're going to see on Postmodern is Midlife Crisis of your acclaimed Angel Dust album. Just before we get to the video, I wanted to find out how you approached writing this album after the real thing and after the touring and working the real thing. Did you need to go away and find quiet time or how to, do you write on the road? How does it work? We needed some time, yeah, kind of away from each other more than anything because we'd spent, you know, about two, two and a half years touring our last record, so... And we didn't write on the road at all, nothing. Yeah, we were completely out of practice, really, as far as writing went. So it took a little time for us to get our heads together and just be apart. And was that good, creatively, for the band to just take that time out? Because you were all doing different things, weren't you? Was there movies? Was it Bill and Ted's bogus journey happening there? And... Yeah, Jim was off being a movie star. Mike was doing his own band. Yeah, we all got Actually, I started playing with Puffy about six weeks after the tour stopped. We played for, like, me and Roddy and Puffy played for about... Yeah, I guess so. Three or four months. We didn't take much Pretty time consistent. off. No, we didn't. But do you, do you need space to do to write the lyrics? Yeah, yeah. It, it's hard to do if you feel, yeah, like there's a deadline or forced, you know, that whole thing again. But I intentionally took a lot of time this time. Yeah, there's nothing like, I mean, feeling pressure from you know, a record company or something, but we didn't really. I mean, we were pretty much left alone during the whole writing of the record, so it was pretty easy for us. Yeah, the hardest thing was just getting back into songwriting mode after you tour for so many years, because it's a whole different mentality. Yeah. There was talk that um, when you had the record near completion or whatever and took it to the record company that there was like, oh my God, this is going to be too much for the fans that you, or the fan base that you built up. And that, you know, people weren't going to understand this, guys. <laughs> is, they didn't, that, is that true? Or? They didn't like it at the first listen, definitely. But most people don't. They'd have the record anyway. I think that that's kind of something we're seeing on this record. It's a natural reaction. And we kind of... I mean, it was kind of our thing, too. I mean, they were asking to listen to the stuff that we were doing for a long time, and we said, no, just wait until it's finished. And then when we, when we actually finished it, we didn't put it together for them to listen in any sort of, like linear kind of fashion we just kind of like threw everything on a tape and gave it to him so they didn't really you know understand what was going on they didn't present it in the uh, most convincing way possible yeah, and we, we knew that the pressure was like boiling up you know over there and we so we just like kept stalling and stalling you know to get them really excited and it, it worked <laughs> what about midlife crisis i mean how did that song come about you don't look as if you're anywhere near about to have any midlife crises as far as the lyrics i don't really know me neither. <laughs> I kind of started playing around with a little si uh, Simon and Garfunkel sample and came up with a melody. We thought it would be a really good song for Madonna to do, but then we just started playing it ourselves. And the way we see it is the way it ended up. Basically, yes. Okay. It's, you know, one of the more, I would say, one of the straightest songs we've ever done. I think it was kind of an exercise in discipline for all of us. He plays one note through the entire song. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's interesting, though, is like the video, it's really good with the song. Uh, it could have gone, if you listen to that song and you don't see the video, the song could have been a really slick, cheesy pop song, or it could be the way it is. And it kind of shows you how powerful video is and how, it can, how you perceive the song itself. A lot of people think it's a really dark, heavy song that kind of took us by surprise. There is an image in there, isn't there, of a man being drawn apart by horses mm -hmm. that some people find a little disturbing. Well, who's, whose mind was behind that idea? Actually, it was our director's idea, and we were all really into it. MTV in America, I think, wouldn't play it for a long time. They saw the video and they kind of refused. They said, no, we can't show this. It's going to give people the wrong idea. Kids are going to go out and try this. <laughs> like, kids are going to go out and tie themselves to horses and be pulled horses apart. Horses or Harleys or something. something. So how did they actually do it in the video? There was a bed of springs uh, underneath died. him. He died. <laughs> Got ripped apart. Yeah. We, we did it in Mexico. <laughs> he wasn't a very video. smart guy. <laughs> he was kind of dumb, so it didn't... You know. He was having a midlife we, crisis. We got his family green cards. 
Yeah, maybe we should maybe we should take a look at it and see what actually does happen. Midlife crisis. Uh, Faith No More's latest video or current video we're playing on MTV, A Small Victory. Um, when you're recording your songs, do you, do you think visually of videos while you're making the music or is this something that happens a lot later on in the process? Like some people I think probably write visually anyway and have a video in their mind before they even, you know, or is the music first for you always? I think we think visually. I think we try to create something that we already see like to music like I think when we first started playing we wanted to do soundtracks for movies like that's the way we were thinking like a long time ago and uh, making atmospheres and stuff so I think we still kind of write like that and this song in particular I think we were thinking I mean this to me is like the slickest kind of song that we've done and I think when we were making this song in particular we were thinking like a video along the lines of the ones the one that we made for this very slick and polished it's, it is like a film set in this, isn't it? There's sort of lots of um, like sets happening and action happening all over the place. It's a really full kind of video. Disco. <laughs> Disco video. You, um, you've had this song remixed by um, Youth from Killing Joke. He seems to be the remixer of the moment. Why, why did you cotton on to him? Do you know him of old? Or? We kind of liked Killing Joke, you know, a long time ago when they were starting. We're kind of into that band, and they were kind of a big influence. I kind of see him as uh, doing something that we're kind of doing, too. I mean, we started off, you know, in a certain sense, along those lines, something really heavy hitting, and now, look, we've done a disco pop song for our record. So in that sense, we're doing similar things. Kind of. Do you like the mix? I'm crazy yeah, about it. Yeah, I think it's great. Yeah, it's real good. It's the first time we've given our, our, our material to somebody or whatever, product, whatever you want to call it, and say, just do what you want with it and see what you come up with. And they brought it back, and we were totally happy with it. Yeah, usually that's we, really rare. With what we do, that's the last thing you want to do is give what you've done to somebody and let them <laughs> rape it or whatever. Yeah, it's hard well, to let go He did a really good job of raping it. And <laughs> kind of made it better than it was before. Yeah, he's got a good ear. Yeah. Okay. Rapist. <laughs> We're going to take it at a small You were interested and we liked it. <laughs> Finishing off tonight's postmodern. And don't forget, next week we'll be back in Helsinki doing some more um, talking about videos, music, life in general. So take a look at this and don't forget, <coughs> midnight next Wednesday. See you then. Bye bye. <laughs>our second week of the first hour of postmodern coming to you from Finland I'm joined by three of the guys from Faith No More we're going to be taking a look at one of your earlier videos um, I wonder if you're playing any of your early material on this tour European tour does it go right back to we care a lot yeah quite a bit of it I'm trying to do like a right back to the source back to the very roots from which we spawned <laughs> does... that's kind of the way we've always kind of played all I mean record just play record after record after record and play a little of each thing I guess so there's a little bit of a greatest hits on the road I guess <laughs> when you <laughs> yeah that. I tell you one yeah. thing about this video is really interesting if you guys want to know why Jim heads. if yeah. you guys want to know why Jim Martin wears a beard look at this video really carefully yeah it's, it's a fun one yeah to poke fun if you want to know how did he develop that little stripe on top of his head you guys are kind of more known as as a rigorous touring band. I mean, you do a lot of touring, um, and I think you're on the road for like a long time. And this time is what is it about 40, 50 dates or something? Yeah. Just for this tour, we're going to tour for a long time yeah, on this, this record. Yeah. This is just this is this is a yeah, 40, 45 date tour. This European part. Do you have to do any special training to go on the road to keep yourselves fit or together? I just put a hole in my eye. It's the most healthy thing I've done. And yeah, this little. This bit here. Yeah. Did you guys do that together? Yep. Does it mean anything? Am I missing something about Well, American we're engaged. Culture? Yeah. <laughs> I kind of want to talk about it. Okay. Is it pr this private one, is it? Very private. Okay.
now. No, we haven't been doing a whole lot as far as exercise goes. It took a while to get into the whole routine of touring <coughs> and keeping up our stamina. But we've been touring. We just finished a tour in America that went on for about two months that was every day, really similar to the tour that we're going to be doing here. So we're pretty much in shape. Yeah. I was thinking about getting one of those... Uh... God, I don't know what it is. It's about this big, and it's a slick surface, and there's two pads oh, yeah. on the side, and you put on these little booties. Like a, <laughs> you yeah, you look like your ice skating. Yeah. Oh, wow. It's, it's like a speed it. skater training thing. <laughs> My favorite part is the little rubber booties. you got to get some. you got to get some. Um, a lot of, well, some bands find that touring puts a lot of pressure on the bands, um, and at the end of a tour, it's like they don't want to speak to each other, talk to each other, have anything to do with each other after that close proximity for such a long time. Does that happen with you guys? Do you, do you find that relationships get a little strained by the end of a, a tour? Well, they do just by definition of the tour, I guess. But, I mean, when we put out a record, we pretty much realize from the you know, word go that we're going to be seeing each other every day for you know, close to a year, yeah. and we just go with that. Plus, we've worked together for a really long time. It's, it's, last tour was kind of weird, because it's a mental thing. The hardest thing about touring is mentally psyching yourself up, and, like, we psyched ourselves up to tour for six months, or maybe, like, eight months, and we were prepared for that, but the record wasn't really happening, so they added on another three months. So then we had to, like, we were planning on having that time off, and then we had to, like, think about touring again, and then they were adding on another thing, and our tour kind of got added and added and added. So many times we started getting really pissed off. Yeah. Yeah, you have to uh, reevaluate. This tour is a bit different. I think that we know yeah, the limits of what's going to happen. I think we can accept that and just do it. Yeah. Okay. Well, good luck. <laughs> good luck till from now until the end. We're going to take a look at We Care a Lot. Yes, it's the Faith No More competition time. Win a trip to see Faith No More in Milan. See the sights. See the concert. Faith No More themselves will take care of you. And you get to make a special video of yourself with the band. We'll make a video with you and spoil you rotten. All you have to do is answer this simple question. You know, we're all pretty much grown-ups in this band. We're all real independent. Except for one of us. There's one of us who's a bit of a baby. He still lives with his mom. And if you can guess who that is, you win the contest, you come to Milan, we take care of you, we spank you, we treat you well. Everything will be great, babe. Send your answer on a postcard, please, to The Faith No More Competition, MTV Postmodern, P.O. Box 1384, London NW1, OHW, England. You win the contest, we'll fly you to Milan. Faith No More. Faith No More on Postmodern and on tour as we speak and ably supported this tour by LA Girl Grunge Band for want of a better, <laughs> better description, L7. How did, how did they get the tour, the support slot with you guys? Well, I think it was kind of, they were kind of given to us like a present. That's nice. Yeah, we have the same <laughs> managers and we have the same record company, so everybody involved it seemed like a great right thing on to it. do. Yeah. Kind of, yeah. Maybe it's sort of a Christmas present or something. I don't know. And and is it good? I mean, are, are they going to last last the distance with you guys? Uh, yeah, they're they're pretty tough. I think they they do sure they fine. Yeah, sure, they is can it, take care of themselves. I mean, is it is a different perspective? I mean, you've toured with as we've mentioned before, you all boy bands. Is it nice to have that kind of female perspective on the road? We're not sure yet. I think it will be because yeah. I mean the touring kind of cycle and just the whole rock world is really just kind of a male dominated sort of thing this will be really different yeah it's a good thing definitely <laughs> i think a lot of people that are going to come to our shows probably wouldn't it probably haven't heard l7 and probably wouldn't know what to expect and maybe yeah. might be good for them okay do you like the music when we're going to play um pretend we're dead next is it why don't you know i like the that? lyrics a lot in that song. i do too the lyrics are yeah. really good in that song no good lyrics wake up and smell the, the coffee, coffee. I like the accent on coffee. Coffee. I'm gonna start saying, yeah, can I have a cup of coffee, please? Yeah. Okay. Just listen to the lyrics, okay? Okay, okay looks you. like the fish must arrive at, at least, just Ooh. to finish off can this hour. Yeah. Thank you. It's like <laughs> coronary heart attack material. You alright there? Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. We're, um, we're coming up to Terry Hoax on Postmodern. Have you ever come across Thank you. Terry Hoax? I don't know Terry, but I'm a big Depeche fan. Well, you'd be right on this. He's done a guitar cover of Depeche Mode's Policy of Truth. Um, 
from Germany, very much a kind of a German feel to the thing. I'm just wondering if you guys had any thoughts about environment affecting music. If you think maybe if you guys were in Berlin, whether whether Fate No More would have been the same as you are now, as, as opposed to the band having come from San Francisco and being quite American in your approach. I don't, I don't think we're so much American in our approach as we are San Francisco. Like, if you look at America, I think we're... A, not typical, but more typically San Francisco band than we would have been had we come from, uh, you know, Los Angeles. Yeah, or New York. Yeah. And like a band like, say, like out of Berlin, like Einstein and Neubauten, they probably could have only come from Berlin, from, I don't know, from Berlin, but they're a German band. Yeah. There's, but it's hard to imagine them, like, say, coming from Omaha, Nebraska. Yeah. Do you get, a, get much of a chance to listen to the European music when you're, when you're on the road here? Sure, quite a bit. I mean, we hear a lot of it in America, too. Do you, do you have any, I mean, you mentioned Leinsters and Neubarten, but do you have any, any favorite European bands that you like? I love the Young Gods. I think they're a great band. Yeah, we all like them a lot. Heino. Sorry, what was that? Heino. Was that? a German that? singer. Oh, yeah? Heino's pretty fascinating. Kraftwerk was always a favorite. Yeah. Die Totenhosen. There's a lot of really good band. German bands. We're mentioning almost all German bands. Yeah. yeah. Well, the Young Gods. Like the Young Gods. Are, yeah. yeah. It's a great Czechoslovakian band called Michael's Uncle. <laughs> that are pretty cool. How did you come across them? When we were in Prague last time, they gave me a record. It's pretty good. It was banned when it was when when Czechoslovakia was communist, but now it's out. Yeah. It's, it's a great record. record. Yeah. Okay. Well, we're going to take a look at Terry Hoax's cover um, of the Pesh Mode's Policy of Truth. Don't forget to watch Postmodern next week because we will be back, same time, same place, with Faith No More. So from us all for this hour, we say goodbye. Postmodern, of course, will continue and uh, you'll meet up with Faith No More next week. See you in a bit. Hey, welcome to Postmodern. I'm joined by members of Faith No More, as I have been over the last two weeks and will be for this week and next week. About halfway through your tour? About it sure feels through. like it. Halfway God. through, we're still wearing the same clothes. I know, it's amazing, isn't it? Outrageous. I haven't slept really either. Enough. It's been rough. <laughs> it's been pretty tough, actually, yeah. We're going to play Midlife Crisis um, next here on Postmodern. Now, there was talk that the song was actually about Madonna. How, how true is this? Well, <laughs> the song <laughs> actually <laughs> sounds like a Madonna song. So it's real easy to say that it's <clears throat> about Madonna, too. You could it's apply it to her, though, as far as midlife sure. crisis goes. She's Easy. dealing with her own personal midlife <coughs> crisis right now. Yeah, and she's yeah. doing it in front of the world, which is real fascinating to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she said she had a quote that said, Well, I've worked hard for this body, and it's not going to last very much longer, so I might as well show it off now. That's what she said about her book, and so it actually makes, makes a lot sense. of sense. Oh, yeah. But don't you think it might be the typical reaction of a girl who was once chubby, and now she has got this amazing piece of equipment? And it's just like saying, I was like that then, yeah, but I'm like this. She wants to spend it before she loses it. Yeah, it's it. desperation. That's what it is. Do you think it is? Oh, yes. Have you well, seen? Well, now that she's got it, she can only lose it. Yeah. Where else could oh, she go? That's so sad. Do you, that's that, do, you, yeah. <laughs> do you think that's what a midlife crisis is possibly all about? Not having been there, of course, you guys. Losing what you have, yeah, I would say. Sure. Sum it up. You're dying, right? Yeah. <laughs> have, you seen, say so. have you seen her book or heard the album? I heard the album. I haven't seen the book yet. I saw her video, man. I thought it was amazing. I loved it. And I don't even like her at all, but I thought it was really cool. Okay. Should, we, should we dedicate this to Madonna then? Um, I'll go with that. collectively not. Yeah. I'll go with no. that. I'll say, I'll nod now so you have some of Don Blonde. Okay. <laughs> it's just play it. Faith No More joining me tonight on Postmodern. Coming up next, we have video from the Red Hot Chili Peppers, a band you guys toured with in 1987. Yep. Right, and have been compared to relentlessly till I'm sure you're ac absolutely sick of it. <laughs> Are you? You've been compared? <laughs> yeah. You mean like uh, size wise or. <laughs> hey, what do you mean? Muscles? Yeah, with, Music like, what wise? do you mean? <laughs> Physically? Music they can do anything, they can do only time. better. We, we haven't on this record, though, be con been compared to them. <laughs> But yeah. If we were more successful, maybe there would be a little. <laughs> yeah, I would say if we had a number one single, there'd be some comparisons. Yeah. But no, that isn't the case. Do you like what they're doing now? I like. I'm happy for their success. Yeah. I think that's great. They, just, that they deserve it. They must. Is that all? Though? I mean, do you do you think that? Oh, okay, the success is deserved. <coughs> they do. But would you would you go on the road with them again? Do you think or? Let's not talk about things like that. <laughs> <laughs> no. no, it's not bad. We have nothing against them at all. It's oh, no, just... it's not bad. Let's just not talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> maybe, 
Should we just play the video? Yeah. The real help children. Yeah. Yeah. Faith No More, or Three Fifths of Faith No More, for joining me for this hour of Postmodern. We've got another hour to go, but before we get there, we're going to play, I guess you could say, maybe you could put me right on this, but a Seattle supergroup, Temple of the Dog, and their song, Hunger Strike. Um, I'm just wondering what you think of the whole idea of grunge becoming mainstream and whether the party's over now. I think the party's just begun. Yeah. <laughs> and we're all invited. The whole thing's going to break wide open. Eddie Vedder's the host and we're all coming. Have, have you seen the movie? Sing I guess that the next thing is to make a movie, which they have done, singles with um, Matt Dillon. Have you I seen saw it? it, yeah. It's like 30-something with cool T-shirts. It's like the Saturday Night Fever of 1992. Yeah, I would say, yeah. Do, does it accurately reflect what's been going on, or, or is it really a Hollywood pastiche of the whole scene? I haven't seen it, but... And I also don't know really what it is like, so... I'm it's sure not really people. about music, I think, so. is probably... One of the disillusioning things that people think if they go and see it, that it's a movie about, like, a music scene, which it's not. It's a love story, correct? Yeah, it's just a, yeah, it's a love thing. It's, about, it's like sensitive kids, right? Pretty yeah. good kids, well-meaning. They don't take too much drugs or anything. Drinking. They no. care about the environment. Yeah, and they're interrelated. So I, think, I think what happens is I think the industry is inventing a new myth. I think the rock myth, like the Guns N' Roses myth and all that, is getting a little old, so they're inventing a new one for people yeah. to buy. And it's selling. Uh, it's, yeah. it's like why they make a movie about it. Well, if the movie Singles doesn't ac accurately reflect the scene there, it still seems that there's a lot of angry young bands coming out of America at the moment, particularly that area. I mean, why is it now that this is happening, that these young bands seem so kind of bitter and twisted about everything? It's not like a thing that's happening now. It's always been angry young bands. It's just that angry young bands are marketable right now. Yeah. They're easy to sell, but they've always been there. Yeah. Definitely. Uh, it just comes and goes. So we're in the second phase, or the third phase. Or it's probably been it going on as long as there's been happy, uh, nice music, you know? <laughs> Disco music. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we're going to take a look at Seattle supergroup Temple of the Dog and their song Hunger Strike. We're saying goodbye to, as I mentioned before, Three Fifths of Faith, no more, but they will be back next week. So stay tuned for the rest of Postmodern and join me again next week at midnight. See you. First hour of Postmodern, in fact, our last hour, where I'm going to be joined by three-fifths of Faith No More in Helsinki and on tour in our fair continent. Now, your brand new video we're going to take a look at next. Everything ruined, right? Correct. Can you tell us a little bit about this? Yeah, it's kind of got a karaoke theme. In America right now, there's these uh, karaoke booths that you can go into and actually, it started off as you go in and you like sing another person's song and you record it. But now they have uh, karaoke video booths where a bunch of kids can go into a, a little studio and make a video and pretend like they're singing a song. So it can make your own music video thing. Okay, I think they have those like, here as well. Do we're supposed yeah. to do a video of that song, but the budget was really low. We always envisioned like big mountainscapes and huge scenic backgrounds and us standing there. And since it didn't really fit the budget, this is pretty much the next best thing. Are you, are you guys really pleased with it? Yeah, yeah, actually, it's about my favorite video. I would video, say, yeah, it's yeah. the best video we've ever done. Yeah. <laughs> it's really slap happy and full of attitude. And very video quality. It looks like we spent $15 on it. Okay. But I think it's refreshing as far as, like, seeing a whole slew of videos. I think this is a really refreshing video. It's not real action-packed, quick cuts, not people dancing music. around. Yeah, it's, it's gorgeous. Lot. Yeah. Let's take a look. Everything ruined, faith no more. Just again, you've worked with the same producer this time as you have on the last couple of albums, Matt Wallace? Every record we've ever done, we've had the same, yeah, same guy we've worked with. Is he like a sixth member of the band? Is he kind of... He was until about halfway through the making of this last record. <laughs> oh dear. He turned against us. We started to go sour. I mean, it's a great thing that we've uh, used them consistently all this time. Perhaps on the next record we'll try something new. We've had a beautiful relationship. But so far. <laughs> there's sometimes, always room for growth. Yeah, sometimes it's just best to walk away, you know, how much, happy. How much has his input then been a part of your, so this, your sound that you have? That's questionable. He's an engineer. He's mostly getting, a, getting our sounds right the way we want to be heard. We do all, like, all the arrangement stuff, but... This time around, he started sneaking some little fast ones in. Yeah. yeah, we used him pretty much because he kind of backed off and let us do our own thing. This last record, though, he kind of stepped in a little bit. Yeah, we think maybe he was coerced a little by the record company or something. We coerced because him. Because he used to work for our old, uh, for Slash. 
Okay. So there's kind of a, a conflict of interest going on there a little bit. Yeah. Do you have any idea who you'd like to who you'd like to work with next time then, if, if you don't use him? I don't know. Maybe youth. Yeah, we really liked youth. Who did that remix of one of our songs? We liked what he did with our sound a lot. Good luck with that. It's pretty <laughs> early to tell, especially since we haven't told him yet. Yeah. I'd like to tell all you first. <laughs> yeah. Maybe youth, you're watching TV right now. And <laughs> come on board. This is your calling card. <laughs> I wish you could play some killing joke, but instead we do have the new one from television. It's called Call Mr. Lee. Television? The they have band? a new record? Band? Jesus. Well, it is very sad for me to have to say goodbye and thank you for joining me on the show these last four weeks. What are you going to do when the tour's actually over and you get back home? Are you, are, you are home in time for Christmas, is that right? We're just going to miss you, Pip, and talk I was about wondering, our yeah, time with you. I was going to ask, you want to come spend Christmas with me and my family? If you're really okay. that sad, We've been you know, working together come along. for so long and stuff, you know, it, it's kind of sad that we're parting ways. Come on, Pip. <laughs> Such a tender moment as this. Um, it would be really nice for me and for the audience if you could choose the video that you would most like to see on Postmodern. What were we just talking about a minute ago? Oh, the so techno bad, star, the, star Wars? Techno oh, yeah, Star Wars. Star Trek. Well, the, star uh, Trek uh, techno. something they don't usually see, though. How about yeah, yeah, yeah. Young Gods? Yeah, they there have a video. Go. Or Neubauten would be good. Do they have a video? Yep. Yeah. Yep. So, we have a choice.